lab, something like that. You should be interactive. So if you have any questions at all for me or for us, you know, please jump in and, and ask. Uh, but I'm Brad Jordan. I'm the Director of Community and Economic Development for the City of Benton. I'm Chris Tracy, the Parks Director for the City of Brad. We're really glad you guys yeah. have invited us here today. It's really awesome. Chris and I got the opportunity to play golf with each other right. uh, a couple of a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Me and me and the new mayors and Chris, and we had a really good time out there. It's back as a recovered period. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> <Here it is. laughs> we we had a good time out there. So, but you know, it's really good uh, and sort of you know encouraging for me to be able to interact with our friend from Bryant because you know. A lot of times, especially, you know, I can speak for my previous boss, and I'm sure for his previous boss, we weren't able to exactly be all that good of friends or, or talk or, or think about working with each other. But really, if you think about it, with, if Ben and Bryant come together, I mean, think about the economic engine that we could be. And I think that, you know, with you know, the mayors, they have a really good relationship now. And so we're going to restart, you know, working together a lot more. Being able to, when we can work together, we will. I mean, yeah. so, so if we all, you know, band together and do that, Saline County is, I mean, it's, it's growing so fast and so rapidly that, um, I mean, gosh, imagine Ben and Brian coming together if you want to. No, I agree. I, I think that's, because I've talked to other folks that work in different cities, I think that's probably where we're behind the most is the other parts of the state see themselves more in the region and they work together to really uh, bring industry and whatever into the region and we're way, way behind. Like even, I know this may be sensitive subject, um, but like Conway, the way they transform our downtown because it's great now 
It really is. It's really good. But I think that it can turn into something way bigger. Um, I mean, you look at the things that are going on. I mean, with the mural. I mean, that just that small, those small little incremental steps that just shows people, that brings people downtown. It, it forms community. And uh, Mayor Farmer, he has a you know brand new initiative that you know uh, in the past several maybe decade or so we've really tried to grow along our out, the outskirts in the shops of Benton, Hurricane Creek Village, around the Alcoa Road area. That has. You know, there's been a lot of investment there, but the mayor really wants to bring that investment and grow from the inside out. So we're going to be growing our down. He's not even talking about what's going on around the outskirts. He's talking about downtown and how we can bring small local business here and just grow what we have. And so we're going to be putting in uh, a lot of uh, uh, murals. So if you go right, see right there where uh, the, the uh, medical uh, uh, building is. There's a little alleyway back there. What that used to be was the old wagon yard. So they would bring all the wagons from town, all the commerce that would come into town would come right there. So we're trying to sort of rebrand that as the wagon yard. And, and so we're gonna be putting murals over there. Uh, we've gone out for a, uh, an AARP grant to help with uh, some of our um, the crosswalks. So if you guys see like the really colorful, cool crosswalks and everything, so we're gonna be putting those in our downtown as well. Um, a big win that has uh, we've just had, you, know, you guys might have heard about it, the Palace Theater, finally was sold. And I don't know if you guys have driven down South Street at all over the past couple of weeks, but Sean Hipskin, who bought the, bought the building, and thank God for him, uh, he has been hard at work, man. I went in there two days ago, and just to see what it used to be, I mean, because, I, I mean, you guys don't know, but I mean, it was, I mean, a building could be blighted, and mold and just seriously about to fall in, that building was. I mean, we were about to lose uh, just a significant part of our history, probably the, you know, the biggest, you know, you know, driver in, you know, our, our civic community was that building over many generations. But I went there the other day to see Sean has ripped out all the moldy walls and everything, exposed the, uh, the, uh, the bricks. He's taken out the mezzanine uh, and he's built a second floor on there already. And so they're going to have a restaurant, maybe two. I think I, I, I think I know one of who, what I did. I can't say anything about it today, but it's awesome. Uh, but also he's going to have, um, he's building two, three loft apartments upstairs. And they are going to be really spacious. I mean, like crazy spacious. So, so I think with that, it's just, you know, sometimes with downtown revitalization or, or just development it's in itself, it's just that one small little thing that domino that you push over and then everything sort of follows after. So I think that what, when the palace opens back up and what, whatever Sean's going to be doing in there, I think it's really going to spur a lot more investment in downtown. I know there's a lot of people looking at the old Dollar General building and there's been a lot of things been said about what, what can be done with that. And I know that uh, there's a couple of groups working to, to try to purchase that and bring that back to life. Uh, also the old uh, federal building that's down here, the old post office, very cool building, WPA building. I mean, amazing. Uh, so that, I mean, I think that could be probably a brewery or something like a wine bar or something like that. So, and, and you see, with that, with the um, the advent of alcohol being served in Saline County, you know, sky's the limit. We can we can have anything here. It's not just car lots and churches. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, but yeah, but, but so so downtown is really going to be our, our main focus uh, going on in the next several years. I know Shelly's been uh, a big part of some of the, the Who, subcommittee. Oh yeah, you're the only <laughs> Shelly that's important here. But uh, we formed subcommittees to be able to sort of drive these different initiatives. And so uh, so from a ground uh, ground level, we're we have a really good start. And uh, so as far as downtown goes, that's where we are. Sure. Um, yeah, our, our downtown is not going to be. We don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> Their downtown is our downtown. We it's our downtown. We don't have that. Yeah. 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 Well, I can tell you, uh, Mayor Scott has, man, he just has hit the ground running. Primarily, I think his, his driving force is listening. He's such a good listener. He's very thoughtful. And so he's, he's listening to people in the community and really uh, trying to encourage what the residents 
residents want and see as their priorities, and that's kind of how he sets his. He doesn't. He hasn't come in and said, "Here's what I'm going to do." He's more, "Let's talk about what we're going to do." And so, um, for us, you know, there's a lot of emphasis on on flooding, um, just the, the growth of Brian and um, all the parking lots and houses. There's just not as much ground to suck up all the water, so it all comes rushing down to Bishop Park, and I can spend a bunch of money to fix the fences. Um, but he just earmarked a million dollars of our savings just to, just to begin knocking out some of the problem areas. Uh, I know the city council just had a workshop uh, talking about Accessibility. The lights, 
didn't work it actually you know there was just not a lot of uh, accessibility for people to use or to rent those fields or use those fields now they'll be in our system anybody will be able to go in rent a field and actually park the lights will come on and go off based on their rental really cool uh, yeah uh, instead of me having to pay somebody to go out there turn the lights on and then wait <laughs> Sometimes it was me. Like, I'm the highest paid light turner on her in the state. So anyway, um, but yeah, that's that's a few things. Uh, but it's I, I really am impressed with how the mayor and city council are really working together. And the city council is much more involved, and it's very helpful, helpful and healthy because they're they're li they they get the phone calls first. Uh, yeah, sort of piggyback on what Chris said about stormwater. I guess I was super naive and wished to think that when it rained, like the water just disappeared somewhere, soaked into the ground, and no one had to worry about it. But, you know, doing community development, that's not at all exactly how, how it happens. I mean, I get probably most of the phone calls I get, especially after raininess that we had has been about flooding and about stormwater so what we have done we've sort of you know we we're you know upping the price uh, in our utility bills theirs was about four and six is that what yeah, you said right. our ours was was 50 cents and a dollar 50 50 cents for residential a dollar 50 for commercial uh, and that's the money that we had uh, to do anything with stormwater in the city so we're raising that up uh, to five dollars and ten dollars respectively. Uh, so we've, you know, we've had some calls about that. A lot of people don't like it, uh, but you know, there's a lot, a lot of what I tell people is there's a lot of damage and a lot of flooding that we just don't see. I mean, there is a guy down there in uh, uh, Long Hills uh, Village that his house, I mean, his house is pretty, you know, seven hundred thousand dollar house, and he's had three times it's flooded in the past couple of years. He's had to spend you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars and it just keeps happening. And we can pinpoint the problem, but we just don't have the funds in which to do it. So now I think uh, with us being able to build those funds up, that we're gonna be able to fix those problems, maybe some temporary easements uh, being donated to the city to be able to work, work on uh, private property, which a lot of times that's, that's the issue as well. Uh, so, you know, hopefully the next few years, yeah, our, uh, our stormwater issue, I, gosh, I hope, will be a lot more lessened. Uh, um, but also, I wanted to tell you guys about some of the um, some of the new stuff that's coming in, into Benton. We had a staff meeting earlier, and I was telling the mayor and the, our, our senior staff that sometimes I really take it for granted that I sort of know on the front end exactly what's going on. And so I just expect everyone else to just know too. You know, sometimes I get it from Shelly. Sometimes Shelly includes me on, on, on some things. But so, uh, if you want to know what the uh, construction going on behind Tacos for Life, uh, that's Nukes. So Nukes restaurants going there. Uh, up in the front, the service road, uh, that's going to be uh, Panda Express, uh, right by uh, Discount Tire up there. And there's been some some uh, talk with some other folks that uh, that want to come to a lot. That's because that'll be the last lot in phase one of the development that's left. So the one right beside Everett, the infinity store, uh, there's a group that wants to come there. I'm not sure exactly when that's going to happen, but I'll let you guys know. Uh, but let's see. Uh, there's certainly some interest in the lot at the shops of Benton, the, the one between Red Robin or between Freddy's and uh, Texas Roadhouse. I know that there is, they have sent us some preliminary site plans, but we'll see how far that goes. We sometimes we can go to that point and then stop. So, uh, so be, be looking out for that. Um, let's see, what else have I done Yes, so, C, so CTE, Technical Education Center, which is 
I mean, my gosh, I mean, it's one you're going to think about before CT and after CT. Because it's going to be the only development like that, the only educational facility like that in the state. So we took what they had done in, in like uh, uh, Frisco, Texas, took that, and we're going to put it here. And it's, it's going to be a very handsome building. Uh, next week, they're actually unveiling the, the architectural plan for it. <coughs> so if you're around the event center, I think it's next maybe Tuesday. So, so they'll be so admittedly what it's going to look like, but it's just going. So industry is already coming in and thinking about that, and they already know about it. So when when I talk to any developer or any you know uh, large corporation, they already know about the CCE Center and what it can do and how you know they're they're being able to sort of pinpoint the ways in which those students there. You know, a lot of times when I was growing up, it was like you either went to college or you didn't go to college. I mean, so so now, if you don't plan on going to college, you still want you know a very good paying job. You can do this; it's going to provide you those skills in which to flourish uh, uh, just in, the, in the market itself. How far does the Benton City limits go over there? Toy uh, X one fourteen. Yeah. Mountain okay. Road. Okay, so and the CTE school is going to be the other side of Mount Road. It's going to be this side of Mount Road. Okay, okay, so that is. So yeah, so if you're if you're driving up on the, on the frontage road there, CTE Center will be to your right, and you can turn on Mount View Road. Gotcha. And so the school district I know has bought some acreage out there to put a uh, new school, uh, new fire department. They uh, Mr. Maldi has donated land to us. Uh, out in that area to put a new fire station there. So uh, so then our ISO rating will be to one, just like the city of Brian is right now. We're at two. Let's go ISO. So, so there's going to be a lot of uh, mixed-use development going on in there. I've seen some of the uh, some of the uh, preliminary plans for it, and it's going to look really awesome. So. If you can imagine, you know, residential area and commercial areas sort of interspersed with each other, and bike and bike paths and walking paths to connect each other. So I think it's going to be really awesome. And I mean, that's sort of the next uh, frontier for the city of Memphis. about 70 acres so I'm not sure if it's going to be an elementary school I know that they are I don't know how Benton has done it gotten away with four elementary schools I mean this long I mean that's the same way when I was in yeah. school you know back in the day at four elementary schools so I know they've done a lot of innovative things to be able to build uh, new buildings switching around some kids I know they're about to construct a new uh, a freshman academy at Benton High School. So where the old baseball field was, they're going to build a freshman academy, move the ninth graders into that, and so then the the seventh and eighth grade will be at the junior high, and then fourth and fifth will be at the middle school. No, fifth and sixth, excuse me, will be middle school. So that's that's coming the next. Uh, I mean they were. They went to planning and zoning, so it's it's happening. Any other questions? I guys, feel free to hang out, Chad, if you want to. There's still pizza left if you want to. Sure. Okay.